helps if I turn my mic on. Ha, I remembered this time. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm your host, Pete, Quarterdeck Arcade. And you see my arcade behind me. A little bit of change in the arcade this week, and I'll let you know about that. But big day yesterday. Uh, the gal and I, uh, after we got our uh, Saturday morning routine done with exercise and everything, we uh, packed up and headed down to downtown Milwaukee for the Midwest Gaming Classic. Uh, there were a couple other folks there from the YouTube community. Uh, PD7 was there, and so was James Hates Everything. And I didn't bump into either one of them. So it, it, there was a lot of people there. Um, and you'll see in, in just a moment when I start sharing content that I took there. I shot both pictures and video. And we'll go through them. Uh, what's new for me? My gosh, where do I start? Um, I had a bad week last week. A really bad week. Uh, I lost the use of my transportation for a while because uh, I had some transmission issues. I have a 2013 Jeep Wrangler, and um, the uh, at first the torque solenoid went out, and then a couple of days after they finally ordered the part and got that in, and then realized, well, I think we really uh, the the TCM the uh, torque control or transmission control module was also damaged. So I wound up being without a uh, transportation and I got to give a lot of credit to my employer. Um, they worked with me and I was able to work from home most of the days. I did take one day off uh, just to kind of deal with uh, issues surrounding the lack of a car. And but I, the good news is I got the Jeep back on Thursday. It was fixed. I took it for a test drive just to make sure everything was okay. Took it on the freeway and it seems to be back to normal. So yeah, I'm, uh, and, and consequently I've sunk so much money into this, this Jeep that I'm, I'm pretty much trading it in now. So I got to work with the finances. Uh, I wasn't ready for a car payment, uh, again, but it's going to happen. Uh, sooner than later and I'm aiming for a pickup truck you know because these arcade one-ups don't fit in a Jeep too well unless you take them out of the box but if I have a truck with a bed hell I could pick up all the arcade one-ups I want right that are still in box I watched a guy we'll, we'll touch on this more when I, I give the arcade update I watched a guy on Thursday this is before I picked up the Jeep pack up five of my arcade one-ups into his Dodge Ram. So, uh, yeah, those are already built. And he, he did have to take one of them. He took the Mortal Kombat 2, uh, two Deluxe apart to, to get everything to fit. But he did. He, he drove off with five of my arcade one-ups in the back of his pickup truck. News of the arcade. Well, if you... Here, I'll bring up the multi-camera view. If you look at... Uh, my arcade it's sparse or sparser than than normal the entire middle section is l lacking any arcades so it's going to be like that for a little while um i'm i'm still trying to recover financially from all of these big ticket items that i had to deal with over the uh past month uh, my dog had to have emergency surgery at that was 1600 bucks right there. My Jeep cost me $1,400. So yeah, it adds up. And then uh, in the physical fitness realm, my watch is started acting up. So I had to go online. If you know anything about runners and, and tracking and garments and how important they are, um, Garmin is a, a fitness watch is everything, something that tracks the miles and counts the steps and all that. So, uh, you know, people ask me, well, what did you, what did the people back in the seventies do? They didn't have all these fancy gadgets. Well, they just ran and they kind of knew how far they were, they were running. So, yeah. So that was another $300 right there that I had to spend. Basically the price of a cheap arcade one up cabinet. I had to buy a Garmin watch. 
Uh, hey, Danny, good to see you. Welcome. Missed you yesterday. Of course, I missed everybody. So <laughs> there's so many people there. It it was ridiculous. It, you know, and, and, and my gal and I both will tell you we're not people people. Okay. We, we don't do crowds. So it, it's hard for her because she, she likes to go to concerts. And for me, there's a couple of events here in the area that I like to go to that are a lot, like state fair being one of them. Uh, that are a lot of people. So you have to deal with it. But I avoid tons of people at all costs. Uh, so we both were kind of a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of people that were at the Midwest Gaming Classic, but it was good to see. I'm, I'm happy for the organizers because it was a well-tended event and uh, very popular. We'll talk about that more in a, in a minute. Hey, Gamer Fridge, welcome. Watching at work. I watched Danny the other day at work. He did a coffee stream <laughs> the other day and that's that's like the only time i can join one of these streams live is during the day so uh it helped me pass the time at work i had it on in the background so that was good but the arcade let's talk about the arcade so um yeah so in order to offset some of these costs that i've incurred over the last month and i i have a you know, I, I like to consider myself a great budget manager, okay? I have accounts for everything. I have uh, a cash box. I have, you know, a cash account. I I have emergency funds, um, stuff like that. I, I, if you saw what I do to manage my budget, you would, you would think I'm crazy nuts. But, hey, I'm an A-plus a student in accounting from high school, and I'm taking some of those tools that I learned and applying them to my home budget. And so these these big ticket things that happened this month were, were huge and they affected me. So I had to let go of something. And the first thing to let go of are the arcade one ups. And so I came down here uh, what Tuesday or Wednesday and I and I just looked at them and I thought, well, which ones could I get rid of if I had to? And I started with the fighters because I'm not a fighter guy, but I did love the look of the cabinets. I love the look of the Yoga Flame, and I love the look of the Mortal Kombat 2 Deluxe. So I hated getting rid of those because I wanted to use them to get better at fighting games over time. And But those were the first two that were easy decisions for me, so I had to get rid of those. Um, next, I, I looked at... Um, and, and this goes to your comment, Zero. Um, I certainly did. I sold it with my uh, two stools. So I let go of that. I didn't want to let go of that either. But, you know, c going around the room and looking at each machine, you know, Tron was an easy decision. There's no way in heck I'm getting rid of that. Star Wars, easy decision. No way in heck I'm getting rid of that. Um, all of the 80s stuff, I pretty much held on to, except for Pong. And what might happen there is down the line, I might get the pub table if it goes back on sale. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I eventually intend to replace everything I lost. Uh, it'll just be, it'll take time. And I'm, I'm of course, going to be waiting for sales. So, yeah, the Pong pub uh, Pong head-to-head -head with the two stools went. The Golden T 3D XL, that went. And I hated that because I loved that bowling game on there. I wasn't so much a fan of the golf as I, I was of the bowling. But I, I, that was easier for me because knowing that the Golden T Deluxe, 3D Deluxe is coming, I, it was easier for me because I, I, when I see a sale for Golden T Deluxe, I think I'll I'll jump on that to get that back in the arcade. So um, it'll 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 be back. Um, what else did I sell? Um, I sold five cabs. So Pong, Golden T, the two fighters. That's four. Oh, X Men. Yeah. And that one was painful. I I did not want to let go of X-Men. That was going to be my next project cab. I was going to take it from four-player to two-player. 
but I needed to raise cash. And uh, as much as I loved that cab, I had to let it go. And that's a cab. There's, there's, I'm probably going to bite the, uh, my lip, upper lip for saying this, but that cab is still new in box at Synergy. I might go back to Synergy and get it back uh, if I have some free cash. So assuming none of you go there and pick it up before me. Oh, man. So, yeah, sad to see those five cabinets go, but I had to, I had to make a decision. I really did. I had to offset some of this, of these costs and, um, what I, it worked out really well because, uh, he came, it was the same guy. There was one guy bought all five cabinets. And like I said, he stuffed them all into his back of his Dodge Ram and, and in the back seat as well. The pong table actually fit. He had a rear seat, jump seat configuration where they folded up. And then, uh, he had all this space in, in, in the back seat to slide in one cabinet off the riser and a pong pub table so it was a huge dodge ram so <clears throat> i did not give him i gave him a discount but i didn't discount too much because i had already discounted the cabinets to begin with i could have sold those cabinets for more and I, 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 when i sell a cabinet uh when i sell a cabinet i I take, I, I generally do it at a loss. Um, I don't do it. Uh, I'm not out to make money. I'm out to uh, make as much money as I can without, with, 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 with still making it interesting for the buyer. So uh, I don't have the list here in front of me, but I believe Golden T 3D XL was going for 350. Um, X Man, I let go for. 350 as well. The two fighters I let go for 300, I believe. And the Pong with the two stools, I had had that down for 400. So basically 300 for the, the Pong table and $50 a piece for the stools. And the stools are very much in demand right now because they're, they're out of stock. So he, uh, this gentleman was really looking for the Pong stools. He didn't much care because he already had a, the Pong head to head. But what he wound up doing was turning around and putting it back on marketplace. So, and he kept the stools. So, yeah, I, I, I tend to think that when I price these things on marketplace, I, I'm giving a, a person a great deal. I, I'm not out to make like, I'm not going to be one of those guys that buys a $150 killer instinct. And then turns around and sells it for like 350 or 400. I, no, that's not me. Um, when I sold my Killer Instinct, I believe I listed it for the same price I got it. So, which was 150. I might have charged. I'm okay. I might have raised it like 50, but still, 200 bucks is still a great deal on that Killer Instinct. So. I'm sorry. I'm drinking so much, Martin. My throat is out of whack right now. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, the good news about all this, you know, behind me is I now have plenty of room to build shit. So when I'm filming content for builds, I can do it right here on this carpet because I got all the space in the world now. I don't have to build cabinets in my workbench area or have a limited amount of space in front. So, um, I do have a layout in mind of when I start reacquiring cabinets. So, um, I'm basically going to go three across on either end facing outward. Actually, all the cabinets are going to be facing outward. So three across on either end of the carpet. And then on the sides, uh, one, two, three. I think I can get three on either side. So three, six, nine, 12. I have room for 12 more cabinets if I wanted to. I have room for much more if I started smashing these things together, but 
I, I like keeping them separated by at least five inches so I can at least enjoy the artwork. Because this is all about nostalgia, right? We do this uh, because we like to have that look and feel of the arcade. Now, granted, a lot of arcades do smash stuff together. I understand that. But for me, it's the art. I, I like to see the artwork. Anywho, uh, let's talk. I don't have this on my list, uh, my show notes. Uh, Simpsons video. That's still coming. I'm still working on it with all the crap that's going on this week. Um, the, I worked on it the one day I took off last week uh, and it got to about a, the halfway point. We're basically cutting down a two-hour video, uh, uh, two-hour uh, mess of footage into what I hope to be a minimum 15-minute video. I don't want to. I don't want it to be too long. So, not like my T2 video, which which was like an hour and a half. Uh, that was. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm cutting it down, and I, I I'm doing it a little different now. I'm scripting it and. When you watch it, when I publish it, it's probably going to seem a little dry. I'm not the best copy reader. So uh, it is what it is. I'm not a professional content producer. A lot of people are not a professional content pro producer. But I, you know, as, as these weeks go on, I hope that I'm getting better at it. I'm not saying but um all the time. That's one of the things I know I do. And. I hate, so I'm trying to get better at speaking to you and recording video. On that subject, recording video, I am nowhere near PD7's level for walk and talks. Not at all. That man, I watched his video from the uh, Midwest Gaming Classic uh, this morning. He, he just has a gift for it. Uh, a real gift. I brought my micro. I brought my DJI microphone with the intent of recording commentary while, as I went, and I'm like, I'm just not used to doing this. <laughs> so my goal was to just take pictures and shoot B-roll, and just show it to you today, and that's what we'll do. Let's look at the chat. Uh, answer that. I think I answered that. Uh, Zero says Florida is low ball country. Yeah. Yeah, it, it. I guess it does depend on the area and the person, really. Like I said, I'm in it to, to make a good deal for the hobbyist. The gentleman that I sold to, he he turns around, either he mods them and then sells them or sells them outright. And I knew that going in. I knew he was getting a deal. He's a good guy though. So, but you know, he, he this is part of his income is, is working with these arcade one-ups and I was happy to uh, help him out. Thumper Squid's here. Th uh, thanks for joining Thumper Squid, appreciate it. Uh, I heard you were at the gaming convention as well and sorry I didn't get to meet you. Um, I was there as well with my girlfriend, and we had a great time. We were really worn out afterwards, though. There was a lot to see there. Um, you know what? I did not even see Eugene. And uh, I, I also watched uh, James Hates Everything's uh, live stream from the hotel room, and which he did that with uh, Danny at the Cornercade. And my impression was that Eugene Jarvis was just there for a panel. He wasn't there. He didn't have a booth. He didn't have any setup and I didn't see him. I, I saw uh, a couple of folks, the rampage guy. And I saw, uh, I should know these names off the top of my head. I don't. Uh, Nehemiah, Paul Nehemiah. He's there. The guy with the artwork for a lot of cabinets that we grew up with. Sinistar, Tron, Mortal Kombat, I think. <clears throat> uh Game of Fridge says you going to Chicago. Wait a minute. I'm getting my comment. Are you going to Chicago? Um, I'm thinking about it. 
that's in October, I believe. Right. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's right in my backyard and to give me an excuse to go to White Castle. So any excuse to go to White Castle and I'll probably take it. So we'll see. Um, I'm sure my gal would like to come along. She's starting to become a pinball fanatic. I played a lot of pinball yesterday. So so did she. Uh, oh yeah, Brian Collin. Thanks, Thumper Squid. Um, I wanted to go back and get his autograph, but we didn't make it. We were so wiped. We just wanted to get out of there and get away from people. So <clears throat> I appreciate all you guys uh, being here today. Uh, to be honest, I was thinking about not doing a show. Um, I, I, I am of the mindset today where I'm just going to plop myself in my recliner and stay there the rest of the day because I got to go back to work tomorrow. So, uh, welcome zero. Glad you could make it. Yeah. Folks, I grew up with White Castle and, and I, you know, my gal, she, she didn't. And so she doesn't see the draw of that place. And she, and physically she can't eat there any, anyway anymore because of her, um, her afflictions. But I, I will go there any chance I get. I will drive 45 minutes because Danny probably knows this. We've got a White Castle in Wisconsin. It's down in Kenosha. I will drive 45 minutes to get White Castle in Kenosha um, just to, uh, take care of my, uh, cravings, but I, I make two trips to Indianapolis, actually three every year now, because I, I am a stringer photographer for the local paper there for, uh, at, uh, for the, uh, Indianapolis motor speedway. And so I'll be going there twice in May, once for the road course race, the IndyCar road course race, and then once for the uh, Indy 500. So I've been to many, many Indy 500s over the years, taking pictures. And I'm going to, I get to do it again this year. I've already gotten the email. Um, I don't know how long that's going to keep up because papers are in a much different space now. And, but going back to White Castle, any excuse, right? I mean, there was one time I went to Indy and like every night I ate at White Castle and my gut regretted it. And Zero, you'll understand that. Yeah, they taste so good, but man, are they hard on the gut. <laughs> at least mine. At least mine they are. Um, uh, Thumper, yeah. Oh, I mean, Stern being so close to sh the Chicago area. Stern had a huge presence at the convention yesterday. They really did. And I got to play Jaws. I didn't play Labyrinth, but I got to play Jaws. And uh, what else did I play? Um, oh, I'm in love with the barbecue game, the barbecue pinball. I love that game. I was absolutely killing it on that game. And while I was there, it actually went out. One, They had two or three of them there. One of them went out of commission because the ball got stuck in the upper left corner. I got you beat, man. I used to eat 14. <laughs> I can't do that now. I can, most I could eat is between six and eight. Eight's the most for me right now. I, I can't go over that or I'll get sick. This is what my gal, this, this is my gal. She can't eat gluten either. So, uh, yesterday after the gaming classic, her and I, she actually treated, treated us. She was paying. So I rode along any, any excuse to go to red Robin. Why? Cause she can get a gluten-free bun there and their fries are independently cooked. So there's no contamination there with the fries. So, uh, we could eat there all day. We could, and they have bottomless fries at red Robin. So we were eating there. I think we had like four baskets of fries because we were so hungry after the Midwest Gaming Classic. I mean, ugh. I saw Bar I saw Barbie. I didn't I I didn't play that one. Yeah, track and field was there. Um 
I wanted to jump on that and play it for a little bit. It's been a while since I've been on a real one. Oh, actually, no, I did uh, at Garcade. I played it at Garcade. And Garcade was there as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, yes, she eats at Culver's. Um, in fact, we were there a week ago Sunday. Yeah, a week ago today we were at Culver's. And she had her gluten-free burger there. All right, what's on my list? Let's talk a little bit of news. It's been a lot. There's a few things happened this week. And um, probably the biggest is I think we got official confirmation of um, the... Uh, Golden T XL, or Golden T 3D Deluxe. So, um, this is the ne Nebraska Furniture Mart website. Um, it's probably on Wayfair as well, but I, I was in hurry up mode for show prep again, and uh, I couldn't spend any more time looking for the Wayfair, Wayfair link. But this is the, um, um, uh, Nebraska Furniture Mart link. Um, it, it looks like it's going to be $4.99, which is great, um, a, a great price for a deluxe. And um, I'm all about getting this uh, when, if and when it goes down a little bit or goes on sale. Maybe maybe Christmas time uh, when, when we see some of those Black Friday deals, I might see if I can't jump in on this. If it isn't sold out by then, I doubt it will be. But anyway, uh, Golden Tea Deluxe. Looks like looks to be like the same configuration basically as the XL with as far as games list, but um, just looking at some of these photos, same same art design. It looks just scaled down from the XL, and that poor guy's back. Oh my goodness, he's gonna wrench that back. Anywho, I, I think this is great. It's probably got the BOE monitor in it, so um, I'm 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 really looking forward to getting that back into my arcade. Yeah, uh, Danny, I do show prep. It's fast, so I moved the show from nine to ten so I could do more show prep. And what's what I'm finding out is I'm. I'm winding up doing more upstairs, taking care of stuff before the show and still only having limited amount of show prep. So I, I try to write topics down that I want to talk about uh, and doesn't always go with the flow, but we'll see. See, I haven't gone through the website process. I haven't ordered it. So I, I'm not aware of that, but if that's true, screw it. I won't get it from them. I'll get it from Wayfair with 10% off. Uh, let's see. Uh, so golden tea. Yeah. Uh, great looking cabinet. I'm on board. I totally want it as, as soon as I can swing it. I still have my sights on dragon's lair. I know Danny, you don't like that game for me. It's about artwork and nostalgia and, and having that attract mode in my arcade. So will I play it? Yes. I suck at it. I know that going in, but I want that cabinet. And it's not just FOMO built up from PD7 either. I wanted it. I think I mentioned it to PD7 before he even got interested in it. So if anything, it's reverse FOMO. <laughs> um, so other news items other than the Golden Tea 3D Deluxe. Uh, this came out, I believe, overnight. I think this was just yesterday. Um, and if you folks haven't seen this, this is a big deal. Um Arcade one up 19 inch screen upgrades. Now this is this is buy stuff arcades, um, and it's it 
if you've seen my T2 mod, I basically got the 19 inch monitor upgrade for the, the T2, which I turned into Space Invaders and they did the bezel artwork for me. Here, now they're giving you a choice. It's an actual, it's an actual uh, menu item on their website to buy a 19 inch screen upgrade. So let's go through the menu here. So you come down here, you, you go to the website um, and you know, high quality BOE 19 inch screen. That's a good highlight. <clears throat> the bezel graphics and Plexi are included and that's based on your choice. And we're gonna get down to that in a minute. So they tell you here up front, if you're using the stock PCB, then all you have to do is just use the provided cables with the 19 inch monitor upgrade. However, they tell you on their sale page, if you're connecting an HDMI device, like let's say a retro shooter or a Raspberry Pi, whatever, then you're gonna need that HDMI converter board added on to this. So be mindful of that if you're interested in ordering a 19 inch monitor upgrade. So here's, we get to the ch choices. So here are the choices. Oh man, it doesn't show up too well here. Let's see, how can I make this look better? There we go, that's better, that's better. All right, so here are your choices. You can get a 19 inch upgrade with bezel and artwork for Buck Hunter, Fast and Furious, Outrun, Ridge Racer. Now I don't know what these custom option available means. Uh, Star Wars, if you want a 19 inch monitor for Star Wars, you can get it. Um, they, you can do T2, there's there are a couple of T2 options, red and blue for retro shooter colors or blue and red for arcade accurate colors. Uh, Time Crisis, you can get a 19 inch monitor upgrade for. Street Fighter Gen 1, Legacy, Big Blue, 35th and Deluxe. And same thing for Mortal Kombat, Gen 1, Legacy, 30th, and Deluxe. So you can get 19-inch monitor upgrades for all those with the bezel artwork. Golden Tee Classic, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, NBA Jam Deluxe. You can get a 19-inch. Danny, you could get a 19-inch monitor upgrade for NBA Jam Deluxe. Uh, Joust, this is the one I'm interested in. I would love to make, I and I know I just, I just did a video on replacing that joust monitor, but I'm, I'm, I, I kind of want to upgrade it to a 19 inch, you know? So, uh, we'll go, we'll go through the ordering process. I believe it's like around 200 bucks for this package. You can upgrade the centipede legacy monitor. Um, and that's good for you folks that haven't done the washout monitor swap. Just swap in this 19 inch monitor upgrade. And then that centipede cabinet becomes, legacy cabinet becomes good as new. Space Invaders Vertical. They've, they even did this for the Gen 1 Space Invaders. Well, the Gen 1 Space Invaders and the Pac-Man Gen 1. So two vertical options. That's pretty awesome. And I'm, I love Buy Stuff Arcades. I, I'll, if you wanna call me a shill for Buy Stuff Arcades, great, I'm a shill. I love these folks. I mean, what they have done for us in the home arcade space is just amazing. So let's, for the sake of ordering, let's say I chose Joust, okay? Do I need the HDMI board? No, because I'm staying stock. So I say none here. This is interesting, they have HDMI with amp board. I assume that's if you're connecting external speakers. Uh, IR sensors modules. Uh, I would not be attaching a retro shooter here, so I don't need any IR sensors. Um, they give you a separate link for T2 retro shooter integration kits, which include the option for T2 screen upgrades. But if you got any specific requests, um, you can type them here. Um, let's go back up. This should have calculated a price for me. There it is, 209. So for just the straight up Joust 19 inch monitor replacement with bezel and prop and the cables to connect it to your P your existing PCB, uh, 209 bucks. And for me, that's cheap. You know, you, you're talking about the BOE monitor, 19 inch monitor and the artwork on the bezel, yeah. So I'm gonna 
take a break here and skip through the chat. Now it's annoying because I put I moved my microphone arm. Um I moved my microphone arm and it's directly blocking this monitor, so I'm kind of having to look through it. So let's see. Uh Sopra, you say you have Dragon's Lair and love it. Take this off the screen for a minute. Um, yeah, I played it as a, in the arcade too. I remember lying. I, you know, uh, I think James hates hates everything. Mentioned this. He he remembers lines for Dragon's Lair. I do too. Um, and and you know how people put quarters up on the machine for next and all that. I saw one Dragon's Lair. I swear to God, I remember this. I don't know how I remember it. I'm 58 years old. This was like when I was a teenager, preteen even. I remember seeing at least 10 quarters on a dragon's lair once. I'm like, wow. And there's just a huge line. People were just standing around watching. And back then in the arcade, you had that screen above the actual dragon's lair arcade. So you could watch what's going on. And so I have a lot of nostalgia for dragon's lair. I really do. So it's number one on my purchase list right now. Um, I, I scanned the websites this morning. I could I could use my target. Well, actually, it's not for sale on Target. So I'm going back and forth between Best Buy and um, Kohl's. Kohl's right now is not offering Kohl's cash, so they're kind of in the uh, in the back right now. Best Buy, I'm if I could get a 12 month no finance or or, or no interest, I'd probably do it. Uh, but I, I, I don't know why I'm holding out. Plus I've had a lot going on financially this last month. So that's one of the things I got to do when I'm done with this stream is I got to go upstairs and do my budget. So plus I'm trying to work in a new vehicle to replace my Jeep. Cause I'm tired of putting money in that suck hole. Uh, let's see. Danny says it's about artwork and nostalgia. Get Dragon's Lair because it looks great, but the game is trash. Yeah. I don't know if I'd call the game trash because I recognize the game for what it was, which was a huge leap forward in game technology at that point in time, which I believe is why it was so popular back then because it was different. It was something different than the usual quarter arcade that you were walking up to. So uh, I have a lot of nostalgia for that game, even though I was never, ever very good at it. Uh, going to upgrade it to 19 inch on all my shooters, BBH, Big Buck Hunter, T2, Time Crisis. Not sure about racers, but maybe for Ridge Racer. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that too. That was an option on here, I believe, yeah. Uh, yep. So I would probably think either Joust or maybe even Ridge Racer just to make that, that screen a little bit bigger. I debated I I debated on getting rid of Ridge Racer 2, by the way, in the same sale. And he was eyeballing it. I don't know if he was interested or just curious about the the uh, buy stuff store uh, modification, but um so yeah, we confirmed they're right around two hundred dollars, a little bit over two hundred. Depends on the options you get. I mean, if you're getting IR sensors, then it's going to probably be a little more. But well, let's see. Let's see. Let's say I added an HDMI board and four corner IRs. Two hundred seventy-two dollars. So that's with the HDMI board and the four IRs to make it retro shooter compatible. Let's try it with the HDMI with amp board. Brings it up to 282. So not bad. Not bad for a complete monitor swap upgrade. 
wholeheartedly agree, Thumper Squid. They are very much great for our community. My goodness. I mean, those guys, It's I, I, do they even sleep? I mean, really, with all the ideas that they come up with for our community. I mean, when do these guys eat and sleep, really? I don't know what you're talking about here, but I believe it's probably uh, uh, Wow, well, what was the option? There was one option I thought that you might be really interested in. Maybe oh, Buck Hunter. You probably want want a 19 you you've been talking about wanting to do the monitor upgrade for Big Buck Hunter. This should be a one for one swap, right? I would think. Unless this is unless there's a difference between the Buck Hunter uh Deluxe and the original Buck Hunter. I don't it doesn't say here. So if this is for the Buck Hunter Deluxe like here's what it would look like. You could get it with a black bezel or you could get you could get it with this artwork. Well, here let me bring it up. I don't have it up on screen. You can get it. Uh... So, yeah. Um, let me say no HDMI board and no IR. Same price, 209. So their flat 19 inch monitor upgrades are, are 209, it appears. Yeah, I, I I know you were a big fan of Buck Hunter, and I know you how you have previously stated that you wanted to do a monitor upgrade on it. This would probably be your source, really, because you get the bezel artwork with it. I mean, kind of a no brainer, really. Do both. <laughs> so what? That would be four hundred and twenty bucks, not including shipping. I don't know how much their shipping is. I don't have a vertical. I, I'm looking for a cabinet that has a vertical bezel orientation that I can reskin. That's that. Uh, I don't have that on my project list because I was going to discuss possible up, upcoming projects. I desperately want to reskin another cabinet. So on Marketplace, I need to find either a shark fin or a, a, another cabinet. Um, with an acceptable body style that's dirt cheap. And I should, you know what I should do? I should go to Synergy and look in that room that they have all their defective arcade one ups and just say, how much for that empty cabinet there? And see how much they'd sell it to me for. Because I, I, I want something to reskin because I have a couple of Raspberry Pis just laying around. I mean, well, One's upstairs connected to my TV and one's in a little Miss Pac-Man countercade right here by my desk. And I'd like to upgrade those to bigger machines, big, bigger footprint machines. So I want to do a vertical build and the Miss Pac-Man is a vertical build on it. Uh, Supper Squid. I'm actually looking for this too. Now, Danny had one for sale and he's going to say, well, why didn't you buy mine? <laughs> I looked at it. I didn't know if I wanted to spend what you were asking for on it. So I kind of passed, but you sold it. So it's, you know, no biggie. But I, I, I would like to have that centipede cabinet just to get the, uh, the and then get the monitor upgrade. Uh, this should be pretty much plug and play. It really should. Um, really all you have to do is, and, and if you're using your existing PCB, you would need to connect the cable from the PCB to the monitor and that would be it pretty much. So just one cable. Hmm, this is interesting.
So let's look at the centipede. Well, they don't have a bezel picture for the centipede. That's terrible. They got Ridge Racer and T2 and then Buck Hunter listed here. Um, I would be curious to know if this could be orient. Well, because the orientation is on the PCB. It's not in the monitor. I'm not sure it would work. Hmm. Unless you're using a Pi and then you can orient it however you want. Wow, you folks are, chat's going pretty good here. Oh, Buck, hard troubles. You know, everybody, I have one particular woman in my uh, personal Facebook uh, friends list that has told me time and time again, don't buy another Jeep. I've had two Jeeps now. The first one was okay. I didn't sink too much money in, other than typical maintenance costs. Didn't have really any problems with the motor until the very end. And that I, I bit the bullet and just traded it in. Well, I traded it for a Jeep Wrangler because I'd always wanted a Jeep Wrangler. And she said, you're going to regret it. Guess what? I'm regretting it. So <laughs> I, I will say this. I like driving the Jeep Wrangler. Um, I'm not thrilled with the amount of power it has. But I've found over the last six months that I've sunk so much money into that damn thing. And I, it, it, what it has done for me is pretty much sworn me off ever buying another Jeep again, ever. So what am I thinking about doing? I'm thinking about getting a used uh, Chevy Colorado pickup truck. It's my size. Um, and it comes in a color that honors my dad. My dad had a metallic blue uh, Chevy Impala back in the day. And uh, I, I, I want to get a metallic blue um, Chevy pickup truck. So we'll, we'll see. I'm going to do some serious research on that this week. <clears throat> uh, gameplay streams. Yeah, I know. I see the videos out there of people doing game gameplay. Um, maybe. The thing is, uh, I go to bed at 7 p.m. So if I were to do gameplay, it would be on the weekends during the day, probably on Sunday after this stream or during this stream, whatever. I'm not... It's not something I've really seriously considered doing. There are others out there that do it and have fun with it. And I've wanted to jump in on PD7s. But again, I go to bed so damn early. So maybe down the line, it's it's not something that I'm seriously serious about. So agreed. A 19-inch upgrade for a shooter is a must, in my opinion. Um, here's my opinion on this thumper squid. And I did do the monitor swap. It helped a little. Did it help enough that I would have done it in the first place? Maybe not. Am I happy I did it? Yeah, it's a little better, but it's, I mean, the dig dug back there and you can see it over my shoulder here. Um, it's next to the joust and the joust. Now, maybe it's because dig dug is a vertical orientation and, um, joust is a, is a landscape, uh, horizontal orientation, but the joust swap made it look 1000 times better. I mean, night and day difference. The black was black on the joust. Whereas before it was a washed out gray looking mess. Dig Dug still has a little bit of washout on it at the bottom. And I have a feeling it has something to do with the, um, what do they call that, backlight uh, in the monitor. So, yeah, it improved it a little. But is it worth Danny going out and doing that? I, I don't know. If she's happy with it, I'd just leave it alone. 
So you're asking me, Danny, here, how much I would sell my Ridge Racer for? I got a lot of money in that thing. I would probably, I would probably let it go for 500. Maybe less. I could probably be talked down from 500, but I'd start at 500. Well, I'm not selling it right now. I haven't gotten to that point yet. Because that has the buy stuff store uh, system in it. Uh, not necessarily. See, while some of us like things to look standard and the same, I've got an XL Pac-Man in the middle of a bunch of uh, legacies and deluxes. And does it bother me? No, I don't think you've got to worry about it. If you want, I would start with a couple or one. I would start with one, see how it looks. If it's something you want to continue doing, then go that route. But yeah, I would do that one. Do this one, Danny. It is super easy to do if, if you take your time. It all depends on whether or not you, well, you, you would have to take one side panel off to get the original arcade one up monitor out. So aside from that, which you are already familiar with because you've built cabs. So you know how these things are put together and how to take them apart. So you get, you pop off that one side and you pop off the monitor, uh, the existing arcade one up monitor, put in the buy stuff arcades, and then connect the cable. That's it. You're done. Done and dusted. <laughs> I'm nowhere near super chat level. I appreciate the thought, though. Oh, I know what you're saying here. <laughs> you want to get your super chats flowing. <laughs> well, at least you're being honest. Oh. oh, Zero says, you could definitely Frankenstein a gore from Synergy Parts, then get the 19-inch vertical screen with a real gore for it. Oh, that's, that's one of the things on my wish list, is I would love to find another Tron right here. Like the, I would love to find another Tron on the cheap. It would have to be on the cheap. I don't want to pay full price for a Tron. So maybe a couple of years. We're, we're looking years down the road when it shows up on Marketplace. They're cheap. Would love to reskin it as a Gorf. Gorf w was my jam. I love Gorf. And I was disappointed there was not a Gorf at the uh, convention yesterday. But yeah, that's that's a wish list item for me. I really wish somebody would do a Gorf. Oh, so I, I think I saw something about this. I, I, I PD7 may have mentioned it on a stream he was on that you had picked up an inoperative box from Synergy. You got it for 100. That's good. That's good to know. Going to retro shoot it. Yeah. Um, I was there on Friday. I stopped there on the way home from work because I did go to work on Friday since I had my Jeep back. And I looked in the room where they had all the defective stuff. They had a handful of stuff left. Not much. Looks like they had cleared that room out. And I don't, you know. So I'm thinking if there's like a Mortal Kombat Deluxe or... Um, something in that form factor or an NFL blitz that's inoperative. If I stumble across something that's inoperative in those form factors, I may ask them, Hey, it's good to know that you, you offered a hundred and got it for a hundred because I'll make a similar offer. But I do want to transfer one of my pies into there, starting with the one up on the TV upstairs. Simpsons riser. No, 
I've got a riser for my Simpsons. Why would I want yours? Yeah, they've got that back room now. That's all all arcade went up now. I was I was back there yesterday or Friday. Yeah, that was weird too. I saw a lot of damaged Buck Hunter, and I. I how did that happen? I'm trying to, I'm racking my brain trying to figure out, okay, was this just assemblies that went wrong for people and they decided to return it or were they damaged in shipment? It's just odd how many buck hunters were in a pretty piss poor state. Yeah, I'm, my gal and I were kind of looking at the Toyota Tacomas. I'm not sure. But I'm trying to get through the chat here to get back on topic. Uh, Infinity game board on sale. Already have an Infinity game table. Don't need the game board. I love, we love our game bo uh, table. They didn't have Dig Dug. Uh, Dig Dug's not an option for a 19-inch upgrade. Which is weird because Joust Legacy and... Let's see. Yeah. All right. Let's get back on track here. Or this show is going to be like three hours. I got stuffs to do. Uh, oh, you want to buy my Ridge Racer for 400 cash today? <laughs> uh, no, nope. I'm, I like it too much. I, I like it for what it is. I'm sure you would. You guys would double it with a trip to the mine shaft or something. <laughs> uh, no, I'm hanging on to my Ridge Racer for now, Danny. I'm, I've, if that changes, if like something else breaks this week, you'll be the first guy I contact. <laughs> I don't want Fast and Furious. Hey, Chaotic, welcome aboard. Um, Yes. Uh, that was actually one of my topics, my news topics. I was going to get to that. I'm trying to get through the chat here. Um, well, I'll talk about it now. Um, that was one of the news items. Uh, let me bring it up here because I had a web page up for it. Oh, where'd it go? I had a web page up for it. I must have... Well, all right. So um, Retro Shooter came out with their, uh, well, first of all, they came out with a series of updates for their consoles for the uh, uh, 10th anniversary, whatever that thing is called, and then the black box, which is what I have. Uh, their, their shooter boxes, they came out with updates. So my, and it, you had to stick a pin in underneath to get to the settings menu. Well, first of all, it told you there was the, it, to know that you had an update, it would tell you there was an update. So then you had to push the pin up, open up the settings menu, apply the update. It'll reboot. It'll go back in, let it sit for a while. It'll tell you there's another update. Got to insert the pin to do the settings menu. You have to do that like three or four times. I don't remember the count until you get to a final version. And then... Uh, and then... Uh, and then my confusion where the confusion lied with me was, okay, where are the, the new games? They were supposed to be like Revolution X was supposed to be on there. Well, you got to get those yourself. You got to, you got to go out and find those ROMs and which I can understand them doing it that, that it that way. But um, so basically you gotta, you gotta add the games to an external USB, plug the USB into the retro shooter and then uh, the games will appear on the on the list. Now there are instructions for that. It's in the Retro Shooter Facebook group. Got to follow those instructions for 
for adding adding those games. There's a whole post on it by Retro Shooter. Buy Stuff Arcades kind of documented the steps for everyone. Um, there is there is another method by uh, posted by the same guy that bought all my, all five of my arcades earlier in the week. Um, there is a technique, and I'll probably try this, where you can take the existing uh, SD card for the from your Retro Shooter kit, image it. And then take a new SD card, put the image on it, and then expand the uh, image on the file system to if it's a larger SD card. Then you can just copy those images, those game ROMs to the same SD card, not have to worry about an external S uh, USB. So I'm going to try that. Um, I didn't have time this weekend to set up for that. I I haven't had time to mess with it. I just I've I've screenshot some of the instructions. And I'm, I'm probably going to go out and download what I need to download later after this stream. <clears throat> but that's out there. That's one of the news items that I was going to touch on was the retro shooter uh, 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 firmware updates and then the, um, the actual ROM uh, accessibility. So anyway, I cross that off my list. Uh, welcome aboard, Chaotic. Thanks for joining. Uh, I would assume that'd be a part of the process. That's not hard. So assuming that you're trying, because when you think about it, the PCB is attached to the old monitor. You're going to have to move that. And I assume that buy stuff does it. They'll have holes pre-drilled, so you can just move it. It's a one-for-one one move, so it's shouldn't be hard at all. Yeah, I don't have any subs, and I'm not buying subs, so <laughs> I'm doing this organically. So. You know, when we get there, we'll get there. I'm not. I'm not in any rush to do to do it. Uh, I use Restream. It it does things better. There are things about Stream. Uh, P Dubs told me this same thing once. Um, I've tried out both. Uh, Streamyard does things does some things I like better. Restream did more. So Restream won in the eval battle. So I'm subscribed to Restream. Uh, more synergy information. Pac-Man had a sound issue. Needed a new 35, 3.5 millimeter jack installed. Easy fix. Ah, nice. Nice. I love hearing these stories. There's a lot of good bargains to be found at Synergy. There really is. That's funny. <laughs> there are a lot of people in, in Wisconsin that do stuff on YouTube now in there. We should have like a meeting. <laughs> like uh, YouTube and suds or something. Or I don't drink beer, but I'll still go to a bar and hang out, drink soda. <laughs> we should like have a monthly get together or something. Ah, uh, the gal and I have a goal, a short-term goal to move to Florida. We really do. I'm coming. I'm coming for you guys down there. I really am. Oh, you know why my head's cut off? It's because I raised my chair up. There. Is that better? <laughs> Nobody wants to see my stupid head anyway. 
That's in case you're confused about what I was just talking about. That's what I was talking about. All right. Uh, let's catch up here. Uh, okay. All right. So let's look. What have I done here? I've talked about the arcade. Uh, I've talked about some news items. We talked about Golden Tea. Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about. This is this I have up um, is uh, the long guns that came out from Retro Shooter. Um, these are gorgeous. I love them. I would love to have a couple of them in my arcade, but they're kind of pricey. And if I got one, oh, they 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 kind of did a sale. This is I wasn't aware of. So for one gun, and then you got the PC hub here. And this looks like a power supply for the hub. Um, for one gun, it's $200. If you want to get two guns, then it's $315 or $316. Um, I'm not sure what the difference is here. Cable protection. Oh. That's to prevent the guns from being stolen? Recoil. Okay, so let's see. Let's read through this together. The Retro Shooter Dev Team built the first modern plug-and-play submachine gun Based off a classic design, ready to plug directly in your PC gaming setup or our retro shooter uh, PB10 consoles. Exactly like their pistols. I'm excited about this. I want I want a couple, but not for the price they're offering. I've spent too much money already on that kit. So uh, they're built to order. Recoil inside the Retro Shooter MX-24 is exactly as you would expect it to be, just like the arcades. Uh, smart bomb and free use buttons. You can navigate with a D-pad. There's a D-pad on it. Optional arcade rubber holes. That's what that protection cable is. Why would I want this? So the gun can be screwed into an arcade cabinet. No, I not ideal for home use, only with an arcade cabinet. So this is for professional built arcades, that I guess. So anyway, so if you want both guns, it's going to cost you $316. And that's not counting their expensive uh, shipping Uh, let's see. Yes, I'm way behind. I'm trying to catch up. I know this. I'm not used to chatting with so many people. <laughs> anyway, um, so we talked about these guns. Uh, on my list, down the road, um, I don't need them. I don't need need them. I want them, yes, but I it's not something I need right now. I need a Dragon's Lair more than I need a pair of long guns. So we talked about the retro shooter update and downloads. We talked about the long guns. Talked about the 19 inch. Um, let's talk about well, let's talk about something really quick, and then uh, I'll move on to my Midwest Gaming Classic stuff. Um, so uh, the mods that I have, well, this might change because buy stuff's coming out with those 19 inch kits mods. I have on my immediate radar. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that star Wars pinball, uh, I can't right there. See, I can't do this stuff on camera. Whew. So that star Wars pinball, the monitor's fried on it. I have it turned on right now, but 
Or did it actually come up? Oh my God, it's working today. Weird. It's. I need to replace it, okay? Because half the time, most days, it's just a jumbled mess. Uh, the PCB is good because I can still see the game on the uh, DMD, uh, the game front screen on the DMD. And uh, I need to do the 32-inch mod to the pinball. I want, I've been wanting to do it anyway. Now's a good time because that monitor is dying. So I'm not going to go to Arcade 1-Up and ask for a replacement because it'll just cost me money that I'd be better well spent on a 32-inch monitor and doing that mod. So... That's one thing. That's probably my number one project right now is that pinball, getting that pinball back to 100%. The other mod uh, that I have that I've had from Retro 530 is the LED uh, functional uh, coin door. And my target for that is the Atari Legacy right there. Uh, 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 right there, my Atari Legacy. So last week, you all saw me do the trackball mod. Uh, so that's in there and working. Works great, by the way. Glenn, shout out to Glenn. Uh, he puts out great products. So I might actually get another trackball for my Simpsons, an, an LED trackball for my Simpsons, and pop that in. So that's a that might be on my project. In fact, I'll write that down. Simpsons trackball. So third project. So the pinball star, uh, the uh, Atari Legacy coin door from Retro 530, and then um, the trackball, another trackball from Glenn for Simpsons. So we'll probably order one of those. Uh, other projects I don't have, aside from uh, I want to order some stuff from Tulsa Arcades to help support that family in their time of, you know, sorrow and need right now. Um, I want to support Tulsa Arcades as best I can. So I do want to order some more uh, riser LED pa uh, panels. So I'm going to shop. I'm thinking Star Wars is going to be my next one for that. I don't have that on my list, though. Riser panels. Uh, also on my project list is getting, um, and, and chaotic knows about these cause I got the idea from him, um, is the, uh, black light, the led black lights for the arcade. I still don't have those up. I have them in a box and I've been hemming and hawing about where to place them in this arcade. Well, the decision was kind of made for me when I got rid of five arcades. So I know how I'm going to put them up. I just need to carve out some time and do it. So, and then black lights. Got it. Uh, chat, trying to stay on top of chat. Uh, that, uh, okay. Looks like I'm fairly caught up with chat. Um, All right, let's pop down this web page. I don't think I have any other content on this thing to show you anyway. So let's let's move on now to Midwest Gaming Classic because I don't want to be here all day. Sorry, folks. You're a great company, but I got stuff to do. Um, I don't have that window up yet. Da, da, da. All right, here we go. Share. Okay, now we're going to roll through the media I, I, I took from Midwest Gaming Classic. Um, so I a little bit of background. I have been to the Midwest Gaming Classic for quite a few number of years, but when they were at their Brookfield Sheraton location, they were basically this convention was run out of a hotel and they outgrew that hotel. I knew the last couple of years I went to the, to this convention, uh, something had to happen because they were bursting at the seams with the amount of space that they had. And it was just getting harder to navigate through there with the amount of people that showed up for it. 
they need to do something. And they did. They moved it. Well, I haven't been there since they moved it. I don't. I think this is like their fifth or sixth year at the convention center, the downtown Milwaukee Convention Center. And I walked in there for the first time today or yesterday and was simply in awe of the sheer size of the thing right off the bat. It has grown by leaps and bounds of what I remember it. Uh, the picture you're seeing here is of the vendor hall. Now, to give you a little bit of the layout of this place, of the setup, they had three floors that they were working with. So floor number one was for RPGs, role-playing games, and dress-ups and stuff like that. Uh, floor number two was more about um, panels. So they had some of their uh, discussion panels in some of the rooms there. Garcade was on the second floor. Um, what else did they have? That I remember. Oh, they had some medieval, medi some medieval. It was right next to Garcade. Some medieval role-playing thing there. So some of the role-playing stuff was also on the second level. So, but then the third level is where the meat of the the event was, and that uh, they had two big, huge areas. The first one, when you get off the escalator, is the gaming area, which we. I figured let's go all the way down and then we'll work our way back. So we kind of walked away. There were some vendors off to the side, a lot of the table tables for uh, some of the uh, higher up known people like um, uh, the gentleman uh, that created Rampage and uh, Paul Niemeyer, who did some a lot of the artwork for some of the video games. He was there. The Mortal Kombat folks were on, on a huge table. And man, I'm killing myself for sell that, selling that Mortal Kombat 2 Deluxe because I would have taken that control panel and had each one of them sign it. <laughs> that you know, and and if I if I saw PD7's video right, uh, there was an actual guy that did bring a uh, countercade, a Mortal Kombat countercade, to have them sign. So um, yeah, they were there. Uh, Tim Kitzrow was there. You know, the boom shakalaka guy. Uh, but this is the vending area. It's it's a huge, honestly, zero, it's 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 huge. It's 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 gotta be at least five times better than what it was I, what I remember it at, when they were stuck in the Brookfield Sheraton Hotel. Now they, they I mean the they have the, like well, over two hundred vendors here. So many vendors. I mean, you had pretty much something for everyone here. You had uh, a lot of Pokemon stuff. You had uh, a lot of uh, table game stuff. You had all your classic arc, uh, gaming console stuff. Several vendors were selling classic arc arcade games or console games. Um Yeah, I saw the Tempest, didn't, wasn't able to get on it. We were moving around. And at that point, we were kind of towards the end of our stay there, and we were just beat. Uh, we'll see in a photo up coming up here, they actually had one of the Cubert uh, New Wave toys there. They had a several New Wave toys, and they were pretty pricey. I should have took a picture of the price list, but I didn't. Go away. All right. So let's keep moving through here. So yeah, I kind of slid over and just sheer amount of people here. I mean, I don't think these photos do it justice. There are a ton of people at this convention, big lines to get in really. And you saw that on PD seven's video. Fortunately, I had pre-bought my tickets. So my weight to get my wristband was not too much. Here we have a shot of the pacer from um, Wayne's world. Several shots, actually. I took several pictures. Their little uh, dispenser here for, uh, what was that, um, licorice rope or something like that. A little flame on the side. And a front shot. Just a classic looking car. Now, this car was actually restored 
from a car purchased late, you know, I think 2016. More shots of crowds and vendors. I did not take any pictures of close-ups of vendors. So that's one thing I kind of regret is that I didn't get some more shots of some of the merch that they actually had there. Jurassic Park vehicles were there and represented. I got a shot of the Barbasol cans on the dash. That was pretty, pretty funny. Parking. You know, I only paid $14 for parking. I, I seriously, that's how much I paid for my parking. I parked right across the street from the convention center. I don't want to tell you. I don't know who's telling you $50 for parking. What might, wasn't that wasn't true for me. I only paid 14 All right, so the Barbasol cans. Oh, here we have Kit from Knight Rider. Pretty slick car. And, of course, I couldn't take a picture from the front without getting a short video of it. So, uh, yeah. So I took a short video of the Cylon Eye. You know Glenn Larson got this idea from Battlestar Galactica. Haha. <laughs> So Thumper, you paid $50. Oh my God. I'm sorry to hear that, man. There was no way I would, I wanted to park at my work because my work was just a block away, but they didn't, public safety didn't have the uh, parking garage gates open. Oh man, he's going to be mad when I tell him how much I paid then. <laughs> I seriously still have the receipt. It's in my car. I should go get it and just show it to you. If you guys doubt me, I mean, the receipt's sitting on my dash upstairs. I can go get it. not sure how much it would cost to get in today for because today's supposedly family day so i don't know if they're giving price breaks for families today or not danny you should check their website midwestgamingclassic.com honestly i'd never parked in the ramp that i chose thumper i i i don't i've never been in that ramp um it was what street is that it's the street right in front of the, um, well, you wouldn't know. Uh, I don't, well, it's where Grand Avenue is. And it's before. It's before the federal building, the federal plaza. So um, it's, 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 it's a shared public slash hotel parking lot is what it was. Wish I remember the name of the street. Hey, Chaotic. Yeah, I remember. I don't care. I'm still going to get a bag of them. <laughs> All right, so let's keep moving through these this media. So another photo shot of Kit. Sharp-looking car. The dash was even better. You'll see a dash shot here, but it's a lot of light glare, so you didn't really... So I took a picture of the dash, but it had all the electronics that Kit had. Um, but the glare off the lights in the convention center kind of ruined the shot. I wish the guy would have rolled down the stupid window so we could get clear shots of that dash. Uh, Batmobile, sharp looking car. Oh my gosh. I can't remember the last time I've seen a Bat Bat Batmobile up close. I know I've seen it before, but this thing was just hot. It was awesome. You got the bat phone here. And then the rear. And the Ghostbusters car, Ecto-1. And the plate actually is a Wisconsin plate, so it's an Ecto-1 WI. So 
pretty sharp. A little scratch here along the door. I thought that was pretty cool. Back side, you can see the uh, proton packs are in there. I wanted to get a side shot of the proton packs, but again, the glare just wouldn't let me. But I like their little touch here. A ghost with a, you know, flexing his muscles with the Wisconsin milk carton on there. That's pretty, pretty funny. Nice little tweak. Uh, they had this shot's kind of blurry, but they had wrestling there. And you use honestly watch PD7's video, you'll get to see some wrestling action. Um, I thought it was pretty funny because every time there was a major slam, it reverberated throughout the entire hall. And one vendor even asked me, What the heck's going on down there? And I said, Oh, they got wrestling. Yeah, that's what that is. Because every time you'd hear a slam, the crowd would go, Ah, so oh, god, another blurry shot. How to delete these things. Actually, let's do that now. Let's just take that out. Delete. Delete. Self-editing live on stream. We had a food court area. Lines for the food were just stupid. There's no way I was waiting in line for food there. So we did not eat when we were there. We treated ourselves to Red Robin afterwards. Uh, more vendor stuff uh this particular vendor i bought a shirt from this particular vendor here i don't have it well i posted it on my channel in the community post so if you saw my shirt post that's the shirt i bought from this booth right here and they were pretty pricey they were 27 dollars, and but i had to have that shirt so I, I i paid it um more shot I feel like they could have squeezed in a hundred more vendors in here if they really tried, they probably could have, but then it would have been more, you know, even though there was a ton of people there, you didn't feel crowded because there's plenty of room. Um, this is the gaming area. So, you know, we're moving from the vending to this, this particular photo is, the first photo I took in the gaming area, they had hit, they had a museum area for classic consoles and PC gaming. Um, they had contests over to the left there. You can join some uh, gaming contests. Back further is where the pinball and the uh, arcades were. Just going down, scanning some of the older stuff because the older stuff, like this is the Odyssey. And Nintendo Entertainment System, an old Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, this caught my eye because it was a TRS-80, Model 4P. Um, TRS-80s are where I got my start in and working with computers. And I had a TRS-80 Model 1. And later on, when I was in the Navy, I actually had a TRS-80 Model 4, but it wasn't portable like this one. So... I didn't do anything with it. I didn't want to touch. He had a game loaded and I didn't want to. It was, you had two basic, two five and a quarter inch floppies up there on the side right here running a game. And I, I didn't want to break out of the game because I would have broken out and wrote a little basic program or something just to mess with the people. Uh, Merlin. Merlin was there. Anybody remember Merlin? Anybody remember this game? Uh, Merlin, uh, this appeared to be non-functional. I tried to play it. It didn't appear to be working. So uh, one of my favorite little toys growing up was this little device. Brought back some memories. I might try to find a Merlin just for my own personal ownership. Uh, this is Telegames, the uh, little Sears device. I remember these. I kind of remember these. Ultra Pong by Atari. Um, this is the Atari. I think it's, it's either the 800 or the 400. I can't remember. Gaming console. Uh, I haven't seen. I, I took a picture of this. I have not seen one of these. This is a Timex Sinclair. <coughs> I have not seen one of these in decades. Literally. And so when I saw it, I got excited. I'm like, and she, my gal's like, what is that? I don't know what that is. 
So that's a Timex Sinclair. That's a classic. Uh, I had one of these, the TI 994A. I was hoping they had Munch, Munch Man on there. That's the equivalent of Pac Man on the TI 994A. I wanted to play that, but they had some uh, slot machine thing playing on this. A uh, Commodore 64. They had a Commodore VIC 20 as well, right next to it. Uh, now we're moving on to the pinballs. Uh, and I got to tell you, folks, and I said this earlier, the barbecue pinball from those folks, uh, Barrio, Barrio's Barbecue Challenge. <laughs> I love this pinball game. And it was for sale for seven grand. I looked at my gal and I said, where can we come up with seven grand? Because I kind of want to take this pinball home. <laughs> It was fun. Uh, it was fun. And I, I was doing well at it. I was, I, I generally suck at pinball, but this one I was actually doing well. My gal was intrigued by Houdini right next to it. She was playing a lot of Houdini and she was actually pretty good at that. I was shocked. Uh, there's my gal playing Houdini. That's Leslie folks. I love that barbecue game. Uh, the barbecue game off to her right here is the one that went down while we were here because uh, the ball got stuck right up here in the in the top uh, left corner. I, I'm sure they fixed it later. All they got to do is get that ball out. <clears throat> Another shot of her playing Houdini. Uh, more shots of the crowd in the game. Or no, this is actual video. Just a video of the crowd's in the gaming area. This is over by the pinballs, the start of the pinballs. Kind of a live or uh, a recorded shot of her playing Houdini. Hey, Biggie D. Welcome aboard. Thanks for joining. I really like that barbecue pinball though. <laughs> I can't say that enough. I want it. Am I going to become a pinball channel now? You probably are. You folks are probably asking that. I don't know. That's my gal. Big Metallica fan. She'll probably kill me for putting that photo up. Um, another video of the uh, some of the pinball choices there. Uh, this was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. She really wanted to get on that machine. She really wanted to play it. Scooby-Doo, Halloween. But she really wanted to do... And, and then they have the Looney Tunes pinball there as well. Yes, Biggie D, this is the Midwest Gaming Classic. I'm just rolling through like B-roll B footage and photos. I could, I'm not the king of walk and talks like PD7 is. So... His content, his video this morning was was awesome. So here's a photo of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I kind of like the look of this, this machine, and I really wish we would have gotten an opportunity to play it, but the lines were kind of ridiculous. And by, that, by this point in the, our convention stay, we were getting kind of tired, so we were kind of whipping through stuff. Pulp Fiction Pinball. Stern had a great, uh, I don't think these are Stern pinballs, but, uh, or maybe they are, but, uh, Stern had a big presence and you'll see that shortly. Oh, this is a pinball that she really loved. Um, my gal really likes motorhead. She's seen them in concert and, uh, she really loved this pinball and we both played it. And I actually thought it was a pretty, pretty neat, uh, playing pinball. This is a custom job from what I understand. Uh, sharp looking pinball. Uh, guys playing Pulp Fiction. Uh, Scooby Doo, kind of a close up of Scooby Doo. Uh, that one was going for about 10 grand, just under 10 grand. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, more, more pinball footage, Hot Wheels. Some of the older ones were along this row, I believe. <clears throat> Lots and lots and lots and lots of people. 
Oh, here's the Godzilla. Uh, that's the Godzilla uh, uh, VR. I didn't get to do this either. And I kind of wanted to. Again, you know, people were lining up to play these. Pretty sharp looking thing, though. Just keep moving here. Elton John pinballs, Wizard of Oz. These are just little clips. So there's a picture of the Wizard of Oz. And she really wanted to play this too. Again, you know, it was busy. Shot of Elton John. Uh, James Bond, Guns N' Roses. She got to play Guns N' Roses. I don't think I played this one. No, I didn't. I just got footage. A photo of her playing Guns N' Roses. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, Chad, if I'm not keeping up with you. I'm just kind of rolling through this coverage right now. <clears throat> I, I got to say, and I'll freeze it here. Okay, what you're looking at over there is more where the arcades were. Uh, the retro arcades. <sighs> kind of disappointed. I thought I expected to see more. I really did. And while they had some there, as you walked over here, they had a lot of ice cold beer. And I really wanted to jump on one of those, but. We were just kind of trying to whip through all of this. But the amount of classic arcades uh, machines in here was a disappointment. Now, Garcade was on the second level. You'll see pictures of that in, in a little bit. But Garcade was, uh, you know, they had a presence. They had, you know, like 30 different of, of their machines, mostly mini or cabaret style in the center. Um, we played a couple of games in there, took some pictures, and that's when we called it. That's when we said, we're done. We decided to leave after that. So it's, those, those photos are more, nearly telling. More of her playing uh, Guns N' Roses. Labyrinth was there. Yeah, uh, Thumper, there's just so much there. Yeah, Garcade was on the second floor. Uh, Jaws. Jaws had a humongous presence here. I'm sure those of you that were there will confirm that. I mean, Stern Stern had a huge presence at this convention, but there were many. If you couldn't find an open Jaws, there was something wrong. I mean, we found one right away. And we they had so many of them there. There's a shot of Jaws. They had Venom there. Uh, a couple of James Bond themed pinballs. Uh, but yeah, here's here's what they had in the big jaws. They had a whole square of jaws pinballs. And so they had the Amity Island billboard there. A couple of shots. There's a shot of her playing jaws. And you'll notice I'm not in any of these photos. Well, it's usually the photographer that doesn't get into any of his own photos. I actually like Jaws, uh, Thumper. I did. I like Jaws. I thought it was a neat game. Would I have it in my arcade? Yeah, I would. But these things are so far out of my price ability. If I had won the lottery, I'd probably have one. Uh, they had rock climbing there. You can kind of see that off to the left. Uh, they had the Simpsons Real Arcade, Make Tracks, uh, Street Fighter Championship. Uh, they, I went too fast. So they had pole position. I don't know what that one there is. Uh, they had Afterburner. They had... Uh, uh, a cabaret Pac-Man. Robotron 2084 was there. A 
just a whole you know, golden tea was there return of the jedi devastators some of the uh racers were there and then over against this wall were some of the older 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 pinballs which my gal got a kick out of you know seeing those classics we were really looking for a Metallica pinball and we were hoping it would be along this wall because it's an older pinball from Stern, but they didn't have it there and she was really disappointed. Just some more pinball shots. I surprised to see so much pinball here, um, which was what I thought was going to be the whole, uh, the uh, retro arcade stuff, Star Wars. I, I should have really gone slower so you could actually make out the pinballs and what they are. Sorry about that, folks. A lot of people. Elvira. More pinball. They had a Star Trek The Next Generation that was already sold by the time I got to it. So I was curious how much they were selling it for. <clears throat> just some pictures of the same pinballs that we just got to look at. Austin Powers. I wanted to play this. I would love to have gotten a shot at this game. And then my gal checked out some hist pinball history games. And these are actually functioning. This particular game was manufactured, I believe, in 1938. So just kind of pinball history, a little bit of a little corner of pinball history right here. All right. More shot at the kind of the legacy pinball wall. Oh, losing my throat, folks. Oh, what am I doing here? Some of these games were non-functional, but that's to be expected at some of these conventions. Um, sometimes they just break until somebody can get to them. Jurassic Park. I believe this is an older model of Jurassic Park. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. It was only $3,000. Is that 3500 Can't really see it. Oh, this, and and I don't I didn't see this in like James content or PD sevens, but uh, this is the uh, the the uh, asteroids recharged game that I really wanted a shot at, but we were we just wanted to get out of there, and there these two guys were sitting on this machine, and so this is the new Atari offering for asteroids, and it looked awesome. I mean, I wanted I wanted to play this. This game looked sharp as hell. And uh, so this is coming from Atari in the near future. And here's the New Wave Toys, Cubert. I almost bought this, I, but they wanted like $399 for it, $399 for this Cubert. I uh, took a shot of, oh, uh, we're walking up to the guard kid. And like I said, this is towards the tail end of our stay there this is just inside uh, their first row of arcades and um, they had a row of like sit down cocktails here this was defender right here down here i believe was popeye i'm not sure what this red one was uh, the middle section here had a lot of uh cabarets and then they had some on the this back wall there they had a little booth where you could buy shirts and hoodies if you wanted to, or hats. 
And they had music over here back in the corner. Uh, here we are playing Crystal Castles. Love that game. And a big, huge banner. And then we took a picture there. That's probably the only picture here at the convention <laughs> that I'm in. So. And then I took a picture of the big purple monkey. That thing was huge. Donkey Kang. Banking Kang. That's what they call them. Oh, yeah, this is us at Red Robin. <laughs> this is the ice cream we had after Red Robin at Scoop DeVille in Hartford. Classic 50s-themed uh, ice cream shop in Hartford. And I, I got to tell you, after a long day in the arcade and then, you know, eating all the food at Red Robin, I, this ice cream really hit the spot. I usually only get two scoops. I opted for three. <laughs> I, I was ready. I had burned so many calories from walking around that convention. I, I earned these three scoops. And a shot of us at Scoop DeVille. You can kind of see the 50s vibe they got going on here in the back. And this is a shirt. I posted this on my Inst or, um, uh, YouTube channel. This is a shirt I bought because I'm in networking, literally. I'm in... Um, uh, computer networking and I'm a network administrator. So I'm going to wear this to work on Monday. Um, I've not lost my mind. It's backed up on the server, but, and unfortunately the network is down again. So this shirt just spoke to me on so many levels working in this field for 32 plus years. So I, I had to have it, even though it cost me $27 and I, I bought it too big too. So I got to wear something underneath this shirt tomorrow, but it's going to be fun. We're going to have fun with it. So that's pretty much the Midwest gaming, uh, classic. So pros, huge, lots of stuff there for everybody. Lots of vendors, a hell of a lot more vendors than what I remember. Uh, lots of nostalgic things like, uh, throwback to movies like you know, the vehicles from Batman, um, Jurassic Park, Ghostbusters, Wayne's World. Um, different activities. They had wrestling matches there. They had rock climbing, you know, things for the kids to do, really. Well, not wrestling, but you could watch wrestling and have fun with it. A um, lot of old stuff that you could walk through and, and revisit. And, and say, oh, yeah, I remember that. I used to have one of those. Or my friend used to have one of those. You, you were constantly saying that yesterday with all the stuff that they had. There. Well, I will say the one thing I am disappointed, one of the things I'm disappointed with, too, is they didn't have more models of the TRS-80 there. They need to grow their classic computing section. Um, I do remember in years past, I did have hands-on with a TRS-80 Model 1 in previous years, but either the guy sold it or he didn't come back to this convention this year. I don't know. I would like to see more older computing items. They did have an old IBM there. I should have shot a picture of that. Uh, they had an old IBM, the one that had like the 10 megabyte hard drive that cost like $3,000 <laughs> back in the day. I don't know if you've all seen that ad for 10 megabytes for like $39.97 or something. I don't know. Ridiculous price. Uh, I agree, Thumper Squid. I really do. Uh, bathrooms were great. They were easy to get to and 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 marked really well. So um, that's good for older folks like us. We knew where they were. <clears throat> all right. What do I have? Any other things to show you? I don't think so. Went through all the stuff. Yeah. So let's catch up with chat. Uh, I'll take this off the screen, go back full. Um, oh, yeah. I, I watched his video today. It sounded like P, uh, PD7 had met them before, but I, if, I'm going to guess that they probably don't remember who he is. 
They had a real centipede there for six ninety nine. See, I didn't pay attention to the prices. I didn't. That were on there. I should have. I was only looking for a gorf, and that's probably when I would have looked if they were selling it. What I would have looked of. I'm really disappointed that I didn't get to see uh, you all there. Um, PD7, I, I know, was thinking about going back down there today. He was kind of beat after yesterday, just like we were. And so I don't know if he's there now. He probably is. Knowing him, he's probably shooting more content. I know he didn't get down to the Garcade. It sounds like he was on the third floor most of the day or all of the day yesterday. Um. Uh, yeah, so I really wanted to try some of the Chinese food there, but again, the lines. Oh, they had a pizza truck, they had a taco truck, and they had uh, Chinese. All, all three of them lines were just horrendous. Um. But I, I got we got really hungry towards the end there, and once we got out of Garcade, we did go down to the first level and kind of walked through there and saw all the role playing stuff there, and we're like, ah, that's not me. I don't care about that stuff. So we walked right past it and out the exit, and we were done. Um, takeaways: I would like to see them do more uh, uh, retro arcade machines. I'd like to see more of those. Now, granted, Garcade had a good presence there, but up on the floor were all of the pinballs and other retro arcades. I would like to see more of that. That's about the only caveat I would put on the event, really. Um, kind of, kind of upset I didn't go back to the Token Taverns guy and pick up that DVD and maybe even a T-shirt. Uh, what else? Um, I, I, again, I don't know what to say about parking. It was hit or miss really, I guess. There were some places charging exorbitant fees and some places that weren't. And we were right next door. We walked across the street. We we're at the convention center. So sorry to hear that you got, some of you guys had to pay so much money. Uh, if I'd have known PD7 had to pay it, I would, I would have messaged him real quick and said, park at this lot. It's cheaper. Um, Their Chinese was pretty reasonable. Danny, if you want to jump on, we can do it. I, I, I don't want to do it too long, though, because... I'm almost at two hours already and I got stuff to do. Actually, Danny, let's, let's, let's not do it today. Some other time. Cause I really, really have to get this stuff. I, I got to work with my budget after everything that's gone on this past week. So I got to do that. And then I just want some time to relax. I'm sorry, Danny. I'm, I know I talked about maybe we do it. We do this, but let's, Let's set let's set up a a time, you know, some other time, maybe next week. <clears throat> okay, uh, it's it's just I'm worn out, <laughs> and I'm hungry now too. So I did my regular gym visit this morning. I did ten miles on the treadmill, and um, I did an hour and a half of strength work. So I'm beat. I just need to relax for a while. I hope you understand, Danny. I really do. And I, and I do appreciate each and every one of you for joining my stream. I really do. So if you like what you saw today, please remember to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. I, I appreciate it. I don't have lofty goals when it comes to subscribership, but I do appreciate seeing that number go up. So, um, you know, please uh, hit me up. Uh, hit, hit, hit the like button and the subscribe button. Uh, next week, uh, I don't know. I don't have anything to preview for next week. I hope to have the Simpsons video done. 
I don't think I'll get to it today. I'm just too tired. I hope to do some stuff with it during the week and hope to get it finished. And it won't be a polished video. It'll just be kind of a straightforward, this is what I did to do the two-player conversion for that, that thing. But I hope to get that video out. And maybe we'll showcase it a little bit on next week's show. And maybe I'll, I'll work up some mods that I can do live next week. But until then, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me today. Thanks, everybody, in the chat uh, for keeping the chat alive. Sorry, I, I, I wasn't on top of it as probably I should have been. But uh, I, I appreciate it. And I say that too much, but I do. So have a good week, everybody. Have a safe week. Um, uh, hug your loved ones and, and tell them that you love them. And uh, I'll see you next week, okay? Uh, take care and see you next week.